Hello, thanks for joining me, astrologer Patrick Arundel, for your August monthly horoscope for the sun or the ascendant. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honoured if you did so now. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. Every time I share some content, you will get uh, an alert. Also, if you'd like to get your free daily horoscope to your device every morning, please see the link below this video and you can sign up. Also, if you'd like to take advantage of my fabulous offer of a 12-month forecast, a character analysis based on your time, date and place of birth, totally unique to you, to give you searing insights of your future prospects and potentials, please also see the link below that is 30% off. Hello Gemini and welcome to your monthly horoscope for August. As this month begins on the very first day there is a brilliant alignment between the Sun in its home zone of Leo and Mercury your ruler also in Leo. They are exactly connected. In astrology this is known as Kazemi and it's very auspicious so what's not to like? Well, it's that Saturn on the other side of the heavens. Saturn, of course, in its right angle with Uranus, has caused so much mischief this year for us all. Well, Saturn is opposite the Sun and Mercury's conjunction. Now, that conjunction or Kazemi for you is in your third house. Third house energy is very redolent of your sign. This is about your ability to think on your feet, to flex, to be very quick on the uptake. It's also about technology. But if anyone is born on this day, certainly if Saturn wasn't in the mix, then there's every chance they'd be something of a genius. But because Saturn's there, it's just like a modifying, rather restraining influence. So if you do have an important conversation, particularly on the 1st of August, it will be very important, however brilliant your ideas are, to protect your position. So if you're sharing something that's particularly ingenious, make sure that there's a non-disclosure agreement, for example. If you're needing to send an important uh, letter, then I would make sure that you register it so that the person, when they get it at the other end, has to sign for it. You have a record. That kind of uh, uh, monitoring can be very helpful to you. But Saturn and Uranus themselves are no longer directly in conflict. That ended on the 22nd of July. But ironically, Uranus is squaring with the Sun through the first nine days of this month. Now this all comes up to the boil on the 8th when we have a uh, new moon in the sign of Leo. Now ordinarily this would be a fantastic opportunity for you to really shine with all the array of your skill set that is so awesome. And you can still do so but you just need to be aware that with Uranus in your 12th house where it's going to be for another six years your nervous system can still be sensitive to its rather restless and unsettling energy. So Uranus squares to that new moon. So as you set your intentions around learning, teaching, training, anything to do with digital devices, the fast moving world of work is really boosted for you with this new moon, but you just need to be conscious there are only so many hours in the day and you need to sleep and you need to make sure you're eating properly and look after your nervous and emotional system. The 12th house is very much to do with our vulnerabilities, the parts of our nature that may be less obvious to us, more obvious to others. So it's that hidden part of us. And that could come into the open over the following four weeks from the 8th. Now on the 11th, your ruler Mercury moves to the other zodiac sign that it governs, which is Virgo. For you, this is your fourth house, very much to do with home, emotions, family. That could see you wanting to pause a little bit. Such a lot of exciting energy earlier in the month. Just having some moments just to take a breather and gather your thoughts may really appeal to you. But then you get a contraindication from that on the 16th when Venus glides into Libra. 
Now Venus loves being in this sign and of course for you this is very playfully located. This is all about being more outgoing, more sociable and more creative. On the 15th however there is a quarter moon just before the transition of Venus in the sign of Scorpio. Now Scorpio energy is more about the precision in your world. It's more about details and practicalities. And the sun's in the third house. So for the week from the 15th, I wouldn't try to be too productive. You know, just try to do what you can do, but prioritize. I wouldn't try to cram too much in. Uh, Virgo is the sign of virtuousness. And sometimes we can actually try too hard and so just take your time a little bit. I think what Venus in Libra is saying to you is have fun. Enjoy being with people socially where possible. Now on the 20th, Uranus goes into retrograde. And that's going to go on through to the 17th of January next year. So that rather irritating, aggravating restlessness that's been going on since the middle of May 2018 to uh, to the middle of November 18 and from March the 7th 19 depending on where your sun position is in Gemini that is going to be something you're going to be need to be conscious of but I think because Uranus is rewinding perhaps it can help you to look a little deeper into the shadow side of your nature and be more open to this and not see it in some way as being a weakness, which it most certainly isn't. The thing is, Gemini, you are gloriously bright with your mind and being more gloriously emotional is a bit counterintuitive to that cooler, more detached energy that air brings to your personality. But if you can accept that this is an opportunity, then from now through to early uh, next year can be a chance for you to really grow your self-awareness. So anything to do with courses, reflection, meditation, any kind of healing, do be open-minded about the type of things you can do with Uranus in retrograde. And on the 22nd, we have the second Aquarius full moon in a month. So we have a blue moon. But this one is combining with Jupiter, the planet of opportunities. If you're born quite late in Gemini, I think there's a great opportunity for you to do well around a, a, a career application, something you want to change with your work. If you're born a little earlier in to the month, some travel opportunities could present themselves from the 22nd for the following two weeks. So into the first week of September. And it can do you such a lot of good to have a change of scene. Now on the 22nd, the sun moves into Virgo. This is about our home. It's about our environment. It's about who we live with. It's about our inner emotional world. And again, this is more encouragement to give yourself permission to take a breath, to be aware of your environment. If you need to spend more time in nature and just have some rest, peace and tranquility, do seize the chance. From the 23rd to the 27th, there is a confusing link between Mercury and Neptune. And you could feel a bit conflicted around the work situation. There could be an opportunity, but it may, as you see it, have some kind of impact on your home and family life. And you may be a little bit unsure what to do. Fortunately, on the 30th, as Mercury makes its way into your sister air sign of Libra, that will provide much more crystallization of what you need to do. It can be brilliant, actually. Mer Mercury moving into this area will see your sense of humor sparkling. And there could be some kind of uh, uh, connection with others. You may invite people around to your home and want to spoil them. Some kind of social interaction, but in a way that feels comfortable. Perhaps go into a place that's very familiar to you, for example. A restaurant that's always uh, held good memories, a good experience in the past. Or a hostelry that you really like. Those can be nice things to do if you get those sort of homey, and rather uplifting vibes around you to then have some playfulness too.